Come, Nerevar, come and witness my sermon on the spooky creatures of Tamriel. Today's sermon will be about werewolves, or more precisely, lycanthropy. Not to be mistaken with farm tools, mind you. You see, Nerevar, werewolves, while the most common form of lycanthropes, are not the only forms this disease can take. I believe you have seen werebears as well in Skyrim. As always with diseases, this one originates from a Daedric prince, Hercene in this case. Getting his attention means you contract the disease, or a faster and more dangerous way would be to get bit by one of those and live, most likely by killing the beast. He calls it a blessing, and it might be so for anyone inclined towards furries. I call it abomination, but don't worry, Nerevar, for I am a magnanimous god, the only god, and I shall forgive those who wish to be cured and honor the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned. I can always use more ash vampires and sleepers. Although I did mention that lycanthropy has many forms, the werewolf is still the default. Hercene corrupted some wolves that forgot Ifra's teachings and became wild hunt wolves capable of shape-shifting. Just think of these as the first werewolves much like Lamai Bal for vampires. So wolves will be the standard here and the werewolf lord stands on top of their hierarchy. These preserve their original forms but display wolf characteristics like fur, snout, and such other furry details. Vicosa the Ascendant, for example, is a Khajiit and a werewolf. If you thought Khajiit couldn't shame themselves any further, I'm afraid you'd be wrong, Nerevar. Luckily, you can hunt her and hang her disgusting head on a wall. On the lesser side, there are man-beasts, which are basically werewolf lords light without the lord part. Much like their greater counterpart, they keep their humanoid forms and display furry bits, just not as many but enough to notice they are not normal people. Curiously, these ones are rather rare, to the point where they are a mystery. I mean, sure, the other disease is more popular and far more extended, but only bits of it. I'm not even sure why these ones couldn't become proper werewolves. I guess failures exist for all creatures. Werewolf behemoths, on the other hand, are the really strong, hulking forms brought by Hercene's favor, or dubious alchemical alteration, if the subject survives the procedure, that is. Yet there isn't much more to these ones. They are just big, and it's a wonder how they can preserve their intellect after becoming such monsters. What's even the point, though? They are just larger targets. They get obstructed by everything, and get even more hair and more mud inside the castle. They don't even seem to function as farm tools. They are too aggressive, too brutish. They destroy the fields. And, well, for normal werewolves, they are just everywhere on Tamriel. Yes, there are werewolf packs even in the Somerset Isles. Not even those pompous Altmer are immune to becoming furries. The largest bulk of them can be found in Skyrim and Valenwood, however. The Skyrim one is mostly due to the rampaging wilderness where beasts and hunters roam. The Reachmen are innate furry cavemen, and of course the companions being weak, willed Enwas making deals with witches. Bosmer, however, do actively and legally worship her scene. They call themselves hunters and whatnot, but all I see are long-eared monkeys, thinking themselves predators by becoming afflicted with the disease and doing blood hunts and all sorts of furry nonsense. As if that wasn't bad, Valenwood swamps are exclusive home to werebats who were seen living near the Kirilth vampire clan. They seldom come out or do anything at all, so unless you get one to talk to you, you won't find much in a library. And I'm not even done with this zoo, you see. Valenwood is also home to were vultures. Not a lot of them exist nowadays, and I'm not even sure they do exist anymore, but I'm not going to go there to verify it. According to some mongrel dog from the Order of the Thorn, these things were so powerful they had to ally themselves with werebears to deal with them. But what else can one expect from these weak mortals? Allying themselves with abominations to deal with other abominations, what fools they are. If they honored the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned and listened to my sermons, they wouldn't need to do such blasphemy. They aren't even important in the great tapestry of Nurn. They don't play politics. They don't form consistent and meaningful organizations. They don't gather influence. They are just oversized, rabid beasts that just want to murder, eat, and mate. And as a consequence, there are barely any important individuals. Their protagonist in this world stems from their sheer quantity and the drama this disease causes. Let us continue with the ones I just mentioned, werebears. 
They are a rare strain of the disease found only in Skyrim and Solstheim. They are quite the rare sight and go around as individuals unlike the werewolves which form legit packs in organizations. They are larger and more powerful though, so be wary of them. Then again I'd suggest the same from just going to those frozen places. You can never distinguish some Nord bandit from one of those creatures with all the body hair and furs they wear. Next, where crocodiles, not to be mixed up with Daedroths, inhabit Black Marsh obviously and unfortunately the southern areas of Morrowind. If only I had the power of the heart to rid our beautiful Morrowind from these pests. But at least they are a more fitting form for Argonian farm tools, or at least less disgusting than seeing them growing hair from beneath their scales. Much like with Khajiit, some of these may not be distinguished from normal farm tools if you don't deal with them often, Nerevar. To the untrained eye, all of these things are farm tools, but there is always that one mad lad that tries to use them as farm tool anyways. I'd like to see one succeed. Now that would be groundbreaking. And on the other side of Tamriel and High Rock and Hammerfell, you can find werebores. Literal man-pigs who surely smell just how they look. There isn't much to speak about them other than they apparently like the climate of the region and prefer to roam around the Iliac Bay. At least they don't bother as much as vampires do, but at this point, other Daedra are more pleasant to look at. Now, were-lions can be found in elsewhere mostly, but also in the wetter parts of Black Marsh and Cyrodiil. A more fitting form for Khajiit farm tools and a more regal one, symbolically speaking, but not one that may be noticed easily in them since they can be redundantly born looking quite literally the same as their lycanthropic form. It is already confusing how these farm tools can have 16 different shapes. This adds one more for each of those. Lastly, some Enwa called Varnard Caressen, Breton probably, wrote about lycanthropes in his book on lycanthropy and mentioned were-sharks. No one has ever seen one, but if I had to make a guess, they would be the fish elves strained down in Piandania. Then again, the lack of sightings would be no wonder. I don't think these people get a lot of tourists ever. These Enwas sure love recording pointless information. Ah, if you do want a funny bit, if I recall correctly, Hercene once afflicted a Daedroth with lycanthropy to duel some creature made by Sheogorath. A whole new level of boredom, but it sure must have been a sight to behold. Surely involved a lot of cheese. And with that, we would be at the end of the sermon, Nerevar. With so many around, there aren't many who would shine more than the others, but, well, there you have it. And if you guessed the topic of this sermon, there will be some ash yams going your way, surely, probably, maybe not. That guar mail looked like it wasn't being fed properly. As always, remember to honor the sixth house and the tribe unmourned by raising your thumbs, subscribing to my sermons, and inscribing your thoughts in the parchment below. I want to thank and bless my loyal patrons for making my sermons possible. Thank you to my adoring fans, Connor Runda and Tonya Davis.